I really like what happened to the banking sector. Mm -hmm. uh, BD, Same here. Uh, BDO mm -hmm. uh, uh, releasing earnings that are at, at, at its highest right now. Uh, uh -huh. You have Union Bank. Uh, so across the board, the low interest rate scenario is working because it allows more people to actually um, borrow and, exp and expand their businesses and it helps people buy their co condominiums as well. So uh, with that, un unless we see interest rates go higher, I think uh, the banking industry would still continue its its upward run uh, mm -hmm. in terms of earnings. So I'm... I'm, I'm I'm happy with it, uh, but I'm I'm all. It's quite tempered down also by what's happening in, the cons in consumption. Some uh -huh. of the consumption stocks that I really liked uh, were were not as performing. Uh, okay, let's get good. to those consumption stocks in a bit. I just want to ask you actually. So you do like the banking sector uh, right now. Now, which sectors would you avoid? Okay. Uh, Easily mi mining, uh, uh, the entire industry as a whole. If you've looked at what happened, majority of the mining stocks that were related to uh, nickel, uh, ni nickel mining uh, ni that were open pit, uh, were the ones that were specifically hit. Mm -hmm. But there are some outliers that uh, were compliant, like Semirara, which is still moving up as uh -huh. of this point, which is good. But if you're looking at it from an industry or, or a sector perspective, yeah. I'd stay away from the mining industry. I'd stay away from. Uh, probably gaming as well, things that uh, are, are not as, uh, I, I guess, robust to where the government is pumping the money in the next few years. Okay, so which brings me back to Jollibee. Now, Jollibee has uh, been one of your usual picks. Every time you come here, you know, other things may change, but <laughs> Jollibee remains a stalwart. However, um, it's not been doing too great as of 3Q, right? Uh, we expect the fourth, oh, fourth Q numbers. Uh, full year numbers are not too bad on the whole. However, take a look at that. We have seven buy ratings, four holds, and two sells. This is not definitely not the best time for Jollibee. Okay. But as you said, it could be a good time to enter because it's cheap right now. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. when, it, when it comes to the stock market, it's yeah. about buying a good company at a good price. Mm -hmm. I, I really think that if you could get it at around 180, 170, it would be relatively cheaper. So Jollibee is a good company, but not... 203 uh, right now. Yeah, I, I would, I, I'm not the, that... Uh, I guess not optimistic buying it at 203 mm -hmm. because the, the gains that you would get from it over the midterm may not be as uh, attractive as well. Okay, well, some other stock, a consumer stock, like, like I said, we would go back to consumers. I am looking at, these were your stock picks as of today. Okay. Okay, so we have Pure Gold Surpass, EDC, and Semirara. You already said uh, your piece about Semirara. Now, let's take a look at Pure Gold, which okay. is up about a fifth of a percent. Now, it's recently taken Emperor spot on the main index. Do you think that this stock still has room to move up uh of course when when they displace mm -hmm. emperador in the index a lot of funds that are tracking the pse i would have to uh buy buy it up to just rebalance its portfolio uh -huh. but at the end of the day uh pure gold is a consumption stock that's in line with the growth of the economy as well uh, I, I mentioned this because the stock is mm -hmm. uh in a mid to long term uptrend uh, in spite of majority of the stocks slowing down or consolidating mm -hmm. it's it's headed up and i think if it stays above 46 it can go to 49 over the mid to short term as well so uh, a good stock both fundamentally and technically right now all right okay now let's move on to the peso the peso okay. of course not doing too well on this <laughs> monday lowest in over a decade now for the last year it's still a little bit up versus a dollar but with the peso we all know we're expecting this to weaken further mm -hmm. how should mm -hmm. one reposition their portfolios as early as now okay if they're mm -hmm. if they're uh, invested in primarily pesos. Uh, of course, they would. Uh, a lot of companies that are that that do a lot of imports would be uh, generally affected by all of this. Uh, but if you're if you're if you're in it again for the long term, uh, even the BSP said it that they're expecting also that uh, this is purely price uh, price action, mm -hmm. uh, meaning that it's market driven. The fundamentals and the valuations or. Of, of our economy is still intact and they have 81 billion in its in its arsenal to help defend uh, the peso as well that's a year's worth of imports when you look at it from that the perspective. reserve ratio yeah and and, yeah. and, and, mm -hmm. and the way i see it as well is when you look at it from a perspective of funds they're just really pulling out money in preparation for the uh, the increase of interest rates in in the us so that's one perspective to look at but should you be scared one thing that i would look out for is uh, how how big it would hit uh, inflation later on because since businesses would actually import stuff, they would need to uh, probably raise prices higher just mm -hmm. to uh, mitigate mitigate their the, uh, the added cost to it. So the loss uh, from forex trade, yeah. Yep. Yeah, so mm -hmm. people are people are pegging it at three point six to four percent uh, inflation this year. If it goes higher than that, uh, it, it's it's something that I would be concerned about because uh, it it generally would affect uh, a lot of the consumption stocks that I like as well. That's right. You're not the first analyst to tell us <laughs> that. Thank you very much as usual for your insights, Marvin. Herbal. Of course. <laughs>